Welcome back to Great Day. If you're in the market to buy a home, you might need some clarification on the possible new state of real estate. A recent proposed settlement has many people confused about the structure of commissions. As you know, realtors are compensated for helping people to buy or sell a home. Joining us to open the door on what that proposed settlement could mean for realtors and consumers is Amy Bernstein with Bernstein Realty. All right, uh, Amy, you opened your doors during a very special time <laughs> in our Texas history, and that was the big oil bust in 1985. So you navigate your way through that yes uh, and then in 2008 we saw this national collapse uh, in the mortgage market and so navigate your way through that but this is one of the biggest things that that's happened in decades as well it is it is for many it is the absolute biggest thing that's happened for me being a little bit older and being in this industry so long I have seen many changes through the years yeah and uh, but right now this is what's on the forefront of everyone's mind for sure all right we're seeing it you know headlines across the country but what's the biggest change in this proposed settlement so NAR made a proposed settlement National Association of Realtors yes yeah. yes thank you the National Association of Realtors made a proposed settlement and that will be ruled by the courts um, whether it's confirmed in July of this year but if everything goes as the settlement was agreed to, um, there will be several main changes, really two big changes. Okay. Number one, when somebody purchases a home, the buyer is acting as the buyer's representative, the buyer's agent. And prior to that, you could have a buyer's representation or maybe you didn't have a buyer's representation. The new ruling says now that you have to have a buyer's representation if you're representing the buyer okay. to purchase the home. You have to have a representation setting forth the services that you're providing as the buyer's broker and setting forth your compensation. Okay. And because so before, that's correct number me one. If I'm wrong. I'm trying to because I, I, I bought a few houses, but I kind of that's the reason why I had a professional. You go here, you handle that, and, I, and so uh, so uh, so basically before if I. I had somebody represent me and I bought a home um, the commissions were 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 typically paid by the seller okay it was most common for the seller to pay the fee and then the second proposed change um, if everything goes um, as what was agreed to mm -hmm. and and, a, and the courts approve it it is the biggest change in my opinion and that is that the offer of compensation in the multiple MLS offered by the seller can no longer be listed in the multiple listing service, which is where we as buyer's agents look to get all the homes for sale. We okay. refer to that and we make our appointments off of that and we know what's for sale off of that. We know who the listing agent is off of that and we know what the offer of, offer of compensation to the buyer's agent from the seller or the listing broker is. Yeah. That is no longer going to be on the multiple listing service. All right, so steps a buyer should take. Uh, one of them is interview a buyer's broker. Yes, so now with this new proposed settlement, the buyer is going to ultimately be responsible for the buyer's agent's commission. Okay. So going into the transaction, I would sit down with you and talk to you about my services and I would interview for the job. As part of interviewing the job, I would let you know as the buyer what my compensation is. And ultimately, you as the buyer would be responsible so for- So we'd have to come up with that. For, In addition to like you have your down payment, you have other things, you would have to come up with that. You would have to come up with that or you still could look to the seller to compensate and it would be up to the seller and the seller's representative who is the listing agent to decide if at all there's any compensation on from the seller yeah. so there's to the still buyer. room to negotiate which there, there was always room and there's a misconception out there that, that you couldn't compensate or, or you couldn't uh, negotiate before absolutely you could always negotiate you can still negotiate real estate fees have always been and probably always will be negotiable yeah. in the future. But but in the past, real estate fees have always been negotiable, so there really is nothing different of the new ruling, yeah. except for who is responsible to pay it, and the buyer's broker in the beginning will look to 
ask the buyer to pay their fee yeah. and the negotiate from there. and negotiate from there and it's totally up to the seller if they want to offer compensation or the seller's listing broker to strategize whether they want to offer compensation to that buyer's broker to bring somebody to their house yeah that's up to them okay and other steps a buyer should take uh, discuss services and fees for representation as we just uh, talked about and sign a representation agreement you're in a contract so that's part of the ruling now yeah so if I were to come to you and interview you to list your house which is what we've always done if we're the listing broker mm -hmm. I would tell you what I would do for you to list your house as mm -hmm. your representative as the seller yeah. and I would tell you my services and I would tell you my fees and I would interview for the job yeah now it's going to be very transparent that the listing broker is going to represent the seller and they're gonna have a listing agreement the buyer is going to re the buyer's agent is going to represent the buyer and they're going to have a buyer's agreement yeah. and they're going to discuss the fees the buyer is responsible ultimately to pay i think we got more paperwork didn't we we <laughs> did get we did get a little bit more paperwork okay. for sure what to look for in a buyer's broker uh, type of experience obviously is, is important yes so i will say um, that when you sit a buyer's broker in my opinion mm -hmm is worth their weight in gold. Yeah. A good buyer's broker is somebody that is your trusted advisor all the way through the transaction from the start to the finish. Finding the home is relatively easy, right? Because yeah. everybody, every consumer can go online and see the homes for sale. It's from the time you find the home to the time you close on the home where everything happens in between. And quite frankly, you know, it's the biggest purchase many people make in their, in their lifetime. Yeah. So why wouldn't you want a seller has somebody guiding the the listing agent advises a seller why as a buyer would you not want representation yeah, yeah. be familiar <coughs> with the area you want to buy in Houston is so vast the whole Houston area uh, you want somebody to be familiar with the area that you really want to be in yes. uh, educate you on the process run comparables and find appropriate offer price that absolutely can cost you. Yeah. absolutely I mean a lot of times you you like the house and you oh I want to buy the house and there you're your buyer's broker is responsible to run the comparables, the other homes that have sold in the last six months to a year, and tell you what other homes similar to the home that you're making the offer on have sold for and strategize so with you. So you don't pay too much. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So that you don't overpay yeah. for a home. Yeah. All because right. remember, it has to appraise by in the eyes of yeah. the lender yeah. as well. Uh, yeah. And then if you want to resell at some point, you don't want to be upside down yes. on that, right? Yes. Uh, prepare the written offers and negotiate on your behalf. Yes. So although our contracts are promulgated by the Real Estate Commission and by the Texas Association of Realtors, they're still not you know, user fr I mean, they're, they're user friendly, but unless you do it on a day to day basis, yeah. you're going to look at this form that I think is 11 or 12 pages now, approximately. You're going to look at it and there's so many things in there. There's option periods in there. There's financing contingencies in there. There's what's called non-realty items, things that you want to ask okay. for. You handle that, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so you uh, need a buyer's broker. Yeah. <laughs> Assist you through the inspection process and negotiate repairs. Assist with finance options and where to obtain them. And review surveys and the commitment and handle objections. Also coordinate the closing, review the closing statements for accuracy and property tax proration. That's pretty major. So a lot of times buyers don't even really fully understand how the property taxes work mm -hmm. and all the exemptions associated with them and how the prorations work between buyer and seller and that's what your buyer's broker is responsible to do to guide you so to guide you through the process so that you know what happens along the way and somebody really handles it for you yeah. I bet your last home when you bought it you probably just did what somebody told I, you to I do did. and then show up at closing <laughs> I did I said where do I sign what's the monthly yes. right yes okay <laughs> um, you know it, 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 I've, I've watched you and other realtors work and you know I during COVID especially when homes were just flying off the shelves a lot of people went I know to make extra money I'm gonna go get my realtor license I'm gonna be a real estate agent yes I, love I that. have a few friends who realized how complicated that is number one just the complicated part of it but also what it takes in your life I've seen yes. you know people sit down with their family for lunch on a Sunday afternoon and all of a sudden there's a phone call got to see the house this is the only time I can see it yes. right and so you're making those phone calls constantly working so the job is harder than it looks and there's a whole lot more to it than I think a lot of us think yes I think there's a lot of people that watch TV and they see all these real estate glam shows mm -hmm. I love that when they uh, do that and then they go get their real estate license. We have several agents in our office that um, as a second career have gotten into the real estate business and had no idea 
that there were, it was as time consuming as it is, as all in it is, and how many things that we really do in the transaction from the time of, not just from finding the house, like I said, but it's yeah. everything in between that really makes the difference between a real estate broker and, not, and then a good, knowledgeable real estate broker. So you really need to interview who is representing you in the transaction and hire that broker accordingly as to who's going to have your best interest at heart yeah. and be the most it's trusted not just advisor. Like, Girl, you need a realtor. My sister's friend's cousin lives down the street, <laughs> and she just got her license yesterday, and she wanted uh, yeah, yeah, not that. And, it's, right. and it's no more just calling on the sign yeah. and saying, and have somebody just run out and show you houses yeah. without talking to you about the process and all of that. Yeah. I think those days are going definitely going to change. All right, Bernstein Realty is hosting a spring market benefiting the Nancy Owens Breast Cancer Foundation, but they'll also offer a home insight session to talk more about real estate matters. For more information, visit greatdayhouston.com and we will connect you. Thank you, Amy. Thank you so much.